A 39-year-old black male with a past medical history of schizophrenia is admitted with cholelithiasis. He initially presented to the hospital with moderate to severe right upper quadrant pain, nausea, and vomiting for 24 hours before being admitted. So he was in the emergency room for 24 hours. A right upper quadrant ultrasound revealed the presence of multiple stones scattered throughout the gallbladder. The patient undergoes laparoscopic cholecystectomy without complication. He has continued on his home medications, including aspirin and haloperidol. 12 hours after the procedure, the patient is found in the hospital room, diaphoretic and poorly arousable to verbal commands. His heart rate is 109 beats per minute, his temperature is 37.0 degrees, and his blood pressure is 170 over 98 seated and 172 over 100 standing. Which of the following medications is indicated to treat this acute change in mental status? A. Dantrolene. B. Lorazepam. C. Ciproheptidine. D. Benztropine. Or E. Bromocryptine. So what I'd like you to do is if you want to think about this and reread the question and reread the answers, pause the video because I'm going to start breaking this down. Now, if you're ready to go through this question, the first thing in this question that you need to draw your attention to in order to start to recognize what this question is going after is what you see here in red. So 12 hours after the procedure, the symptoms start, right? He's got some change in mental status that did not start until 12 hours after surgery. And the surgery took place 24 hours after the patient was in the emergency department. So we're talking about some time delay here where the patient was probably normal and then after this time period, he had this acute change in mental status. Now look at the other things that are highlighted in red here. He's tachycardic with a heart rate of 109. He's got a low grade temp of 37.0 and he's hypertensive to 170 over 98. So we've got these changes and they've only occurred after he's gotten surgery. So now the question is, what's going on? And once you recognize what's going on, you'll have to infer what the treatment would be. So that's the point of this question. So as you can tell by looking at choices A, B, C, D, and E, the differential here is pointing out a couple different probable causes. The correct answer in this question is B, lorazepam. And the reason is that in this question, the patient is undergoing alcohol withdrawal. So how were you supposed to know that? Well, when you get a question where a patient gets admitted to a hospital and then some time period, from 24 to 72 hours later, they get an acute change in mental status, chances are that the exam writers are going after alcohol withdrawal. What you're supposed to assume is that this patient regularly drinks alcohol, but since he was admitted to the hospital, he obviously couldn't drink because he was in the hospital. So from 24 to 48, up to even 72 hours later, the peak of alcohol withdrawal will occur. So you'll be diaphoretic, have a low grade temperature, be tachycardic, be hypertensive, maybe have fine tremulousness, maybe visual hallucinations, and in really life-threatening cases, seizures if the patient is undergoing delirium tremens. So generally speaking, the high yield concept here is that the patient could not drink for 24 to, to you know 36 hours and then started to go into alcohol withdrawal. So the treatment for alcohol withdrawal is to use benzodiazepines because you're trying to replace the effect on the brain that the alcohol normally has. But just to be complete here, let's go through the wrong answer choices and point out what disease process they would be treating, and I can tell you why it's not the correct answer in each of these situations. So let's start with dantrolene, option A. Now dantrolene is clearly not the correct answer since I told you that the answer is B. But what would dantrolene treat? Well, you should recall, and this is very high yield to know, that dantrolene inhibits the ryanodine receptor, and prevents the release of calcium from the sarcoplasmic reticulum. So this offsets metabolic hyperthermia. So dantrolene would be the correct choice if the disease or the pathophysiology here was malignant hyperthermia or neuroleptic malignant syndrome. So why is this not malignant hyperthermia? Well, I know that you may be inclined to choose this because the patient underwent surgery and maybe you're thinking that the anesthetic agents used could cause malignant hyperthermia. But there's two reasons here why this is incorrect. One is that malignant hyperthermia is classically associated with the inhaled anesthetics. And there's really no evidence in this question to suggest that the anesthesia used was inhaled anesthesia. 
The other thing is that malignant hyperthermia would have a temperature much higher than 37.0 degrees. So this is a more low-grade temperature that you should classically associate with alcohol withdrawal, but in malignant hyperthermia, that would be significantly higher. Now, why is it not neuroleptic malignant syndrome? I know that you looked at this question. Maybe you saw that the patient was on the antipsychotic haloperidol, and you're thinking, okay, maybe this is neuroleptic malignant syndrome. But with neuroleptic malignant syndrome, they would have to give you specific symptoms. And the one that they would give you is lead pipe rigidity. Notice how there's no mention of that in this question. If they wanted you to go in the direction of neuroleptic malignant syndrome, they would not have told you about this delay in this 24 to 36 hour delay for the patient. And they would have had to tell you that there's lead pipe rigidity. Otherwise, you wouldn't have been able to differentiate between the two. So in the absence of that syndrome or in the absence of that symptom, you cannot pick dantrolene because it's not malignant hyperthermia, the temperature is not high enough, there's no mention of inhaled anesthetics, and you can't pick NMS because there's no mention of lead pipe rigidity, and just the fact that the patient is on haloperidol is not enough to justify that answer. What about choice C, ciproheptidine? Well, ciproheptidine is the treatment for serotonin syndrome. Let me pause for one second. Acutely, the treatment for serotonin syndrome is lorazepam, right? It's a benzodiazepine. But chronically, if you need to reverse the effects of serotonin, the answer is ciproheptidine. If they wanted you to pick serotonin syndrome, two things would have had to have been in this question. One, the patient would have had to have been on a medication that is serotonergic. Both aspirin and haloperidol have no effects on serotonin. The other thing is that serotonin syndrome has very specific symptoms in addition to fever and tachycardia. Those classic symptoms are the GI side effects of serotonin, so nausea, vomiting, flushing, etc. You would also see hyperreflexia or myoclonus. And notice that none of that is mentioned in this question. All you're getting is vital sign instability 24 to 36 hours after admission to the hospital. So serotonin syndrome is not the correct answer, and therefore ciproheptidine is not the correct treatment. What about choice D, benztropine? Well, benztropine is an anticholinergic agent that is used to treat extra pyramidal symptoms, also known as EPS. If this question wanted you to go after EPS, they would have described either dystonia or akathisia or Parkinsonism. Now, notice that none of that is described in this vignette. So in the case of dystonia, they would have given you something like torticollis, like oculogyric crisis, like the inability to talk or swallow. In the case of akathisia, they would have given you restlessness, pacing, psychomotor agitation, but none of that is mentioned in this question. And in Parkinsonism, they would have given you the classic signs of Parkinson's, right? So they would have given you a shuffling gait, a pill rolling tremor, things like that. Notice that none of those symptoms are mentioned here. All you have is vital sign instability 24 to 36 hours after admission to the hospital. So clearly the answer is alcohol withdrawal and EPS is not the right answer. And if you were tempted to pick EPS and therefore pick choice D only because the patient was on haloperidol, not the best answer. And then E is bromocryptine. Now, bromocryptine is a dopamine agonist that is sometimes used in really refractory Parkinson's disease and often used in cases of hyperprolactinemia because remember that if you increase the level of dopamine in the body by the inverse relationship to prolactin, you decrease levels of prolactin. Now, if they wanted to put you in either of these directions, they would have had to, they would have had to give you Parkinson's disease symptoms as we already talked about, or they would have had to give you some type of clinical scenario to make you think hyperprolactinemia, such as some kind of brain tumor, but obviously none of that is mentioned in this vignette. So, you know, looking through all of these treatment options that are all related to disease processes that can cause tachycardia, hypertension, fever, change in mental status, the best answer is still alcohol withdrawal, and we treat alcohol withdrawal with benzodiazepine replacement. So the high yield bottom line of the, of the video QBank number one is that anytime a patient has an acute change in mental status, after going into an inpatient facility for about 24 to 72 hours, you need to be thinking alcohol withdrawal. The peak of alcohol withdrawal will occur from 48 to 72 hours, and this is the danger zone where DTs, also known as delirium tremens, can occur. So if you see visual hallucinations, seizures, they're pointing, they're screaming alcohol withdrawal at you. You treat with benzodiazepines and you differentiate alcohol withdrawal against serotonin syndrome, neuroleptic malignant syndrome, and malignant hypothermia 
based on which drugs were given. So in the case of serotonin syndrome, it would have to be like an SSRI. In the case of NMS, they would have to be long-term on a neuroleptic like haloperidol, but you would also have to have the absence of really high yield findings for alcohol withdrawal, as we already said. For malignant hyperthermia, the patient would have had to receive inhaled anesthetics, and the temperature would be much higher than just a low grade 37.0. So that's it for our high yield question number one. Remember, anytime a patient has an acute change in mental status after being admitted to a hospital, the answer is probably alcohol withdrawal.